Chapter 44. How many do we have now? Robin asked, looking over at the buckets of fish sitting at the edge of the river. Little John tugged on his little on his fishing rod, then glanced at the buckets. I'm guessing four dozen, he said, give or take. So almost 50 fish, Robin calculated. That should be enough for every family in Nottingham to have at least one with a few left over for us. He grinned. Not a bad morning's work, if I do say so myself. Marin would be so proud, John declared, and Robin felt his face heat. It's not for her, he reminded his friend. It's for the animals. Mm-hmm. Sure, the animals. Robin groaned and cast his line back into the water, ignoring John and focusing on the task at hand. Between the fish and the berries his men had been gathering from the forest and the stew John had been simmering on the fire all day, they would be able to provide the animals in town quite at the feast. He had to admit, it felt good to feel useful again, and he sh was sh pretty sure the others felt the same. They had been surprisingly excited about the idea of helping those back home, and it made Robin wonder why none of them had thought to do so before. He supposed it had just seemed so overwhelming at the time. They were in survival mode, trying to figure things out, but then Marion had shown them how even small acts could make a big difference. Maybe they couldn't save the kingdom or prevent unfair taxes from being collected, but they could fish and chop wood and stir up a good pot of stew. All little things in and of themselves, but, to, but together they added up. Suddenly he felt a small tug on his line. He pulled on the rod ever so gently, trying to determine whether it was his imagination, but no, there was a new, new weight to it. Something was on his hook. He winked at little John. His bear friend groaned. Another? I swear, Robbie, you are the luckiest fox I know. Slowly rising to his feet, Robin tugged again, making sure the fish was still on the line. Then he began to reel in, in paw over paw over paw. As the fish realized what was happening, he started to fight to get away. It was strong too, a big one. The citizens of Nottingham are going to dine well tonight, Robin cheered as he continued to wrestle with the fish. Little John watched, clasping his paws together and rubbing them with excitement. Robin had just about gotten the fish to the surface when his ears caught a rustling in the bushes behind him. Startled, he whirled around, managing to lose his grip on his line in the process. Little John dove for it, but slipped on the wet dock. His feet shot out from under him, and he went headfirst into the pot, along with Robin's rod. Ugh! he cried when he emerged. Of all the miserable... But Robin was no longer listening. He was staring at the figure stepping out of the bushes. It was Marion. Robin's first thought was to hug her, then to tell her what they'd been up to in her name. But the look on her face, flushed and anxious, stopped him. What is it, he said, asked wearily. What's wrong? The sheriff is on his way, she told him flatly. He has a map to your camp, and he's gone to Prince John, probably to secure an army to come in and capture you and your men. She leaned over, paws on her legs, trying to catch her breath. I got here as soon as I could, but they, wouldn't, but they won't be far behind. Robin cursed under his breath. He glanced over at little John who was making his way out of the water, wet reeds sticking to his fur. The bear shook his head. How did the sheriff get a map, he asked. From Friar Tuck, Marion told them. It's a long story. The point is, they're on their way. We need to evacuate your camp before they arrive. Robin nodded briskly. Then he paused. He glanced at John. Or... The bear frowned. Or what? What are you thinking, Robbie? We could stand our ground. Robin said with a shrug, defend our land. Defend it, little John repeated, his eyebrows raised. Have you gone bonkers? Robin, this is the sheriff, backed by Prince John's own guard, and we're only a few outlaws hiding in the woods. Outlaws who fought a war for their king, Robin reminded him. It's not like we've never seen battle. Also, 
We know the forest. They don't. And they're counting on the element of surprise. But he gave Marion a grateful look. They won't have it. I suppose that's true, little John mused. Robin clapped his paws together. Come, let's rally the merry men and get into position. We don't know how much time we have, and we need to be ready. He turned to Marion, welling with gratitude. Thank you, he said sincerely. This means more to me than you know. And that's just the half of it, Cluck stepped out of the bushes, rolling a cart behind her filled with ropes and swords and bows and quivers of arrows. Robin's jaw dropped. Thought these might come in handy, she said with a wink. I'll say, little John crowed, grabbing a sword and taking a practice swing. With these, we might actually stand a chance. Where did you get these? Robin asked, picking up a shiny bow and testing its string. In Nottingham, Cluck said. Now that the animals have resources, they've been able to open their shops again. The place is buzzing, and they do good work too. That's great, Robin said, and he meant it. Every time he thought he couldn't be more impressed by Marion, he set down the bow, turning back to the vixen. Again, I thank you, he said. But now I think it's time for you to go home. You don't want to be here when the fighting begins. But Marion shook her head. Not a chance, she said. You need every able-bodied animal to fight if you want to win this. That includes Cluck and me. Robin raised his eyebrows. I didn't know you could fight. I was trained by the best, she informed him, shooting a look at Cluck. And Cluck here used to be one of King Richard's knights. We could be useful, I promise. Robin forced himself to nod. He hated the idea of Marion putting herself in danger. But at the same time, he knew better than to argue with the look he saw on her face. It was the same look he'd seen countless times when they were children playing in the castle courtyard. The one that said, just try to change my mind. She was brave. She always had been. And she was right in this case too. If they were going to have even the slightest chance of winning against Prince John's soldiers, they'd need everyone working together. All right, he forced himself to say. Let's go find the men. It seems we've got a battle to plan.